Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to Don Cherry's Grapevine podcast. I'm Cindy Cherry here with my, my Everybody dad. Everybody says you should be speaking more. Oh, really? Oh, okay. You, know, you don't want me to talk Kathy, to you. Kathy, who ran uh, the coach's quarter, you know, nobody ran it, but she used to, she used to, uh, uh, Kathy Broderick, for, uh, I better not say this, probably get fired, but she, uh, she, uh, I, I'd, I'd be true, believe it or not, I'd mark things down during a game and she'd email me after, you know, like, and we'd be right in, right in sync. And well, she knows her hockey. Oh, Holy does folks. she ever? Kathy, she really knows her hockey. I have to tell you a story, a funny story. When I was in my heyday and I was, and we were going and they tell her, but she first started, she was a rookie. Remember she had red hair. She was a runner. She started right, right from the ground floor. Yeah, she was, a, she, she knew. So they told her, he said, get all the stats and give Don and, and Ron the stats. Well, there was six seconds to go in the game and she, and I could hear her getting the stats. But, you know, and it used to be a little room we had in uh, Madison, uh, uh, Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. And so I, all I told her after was, I said, look, I guess I was a little rough with her. I said, you don't have to get stats. We're off the air at 6 p.m. So she told me later, she walked away and she come back to me. She redheaded. Eh? I was told to get stats and I'm going to get stats and I'll give you a stat. And she, you really give me heck. And I thought, boy, what a... And you thing. liked her after oh, that. Because she's working in a man's world in those days oh, down yeah, there. yeah, back then. And remember, she had red hair. And she, I, and I remember she used to smoke too. I, she doesn't smoke anymore, but I always, I always remembered that she came back and she, and she thought, and she said after, so oh, I guess I'm fired because I, I give Don. Well, Cherry. you're secure enough in yourself that I you thought, can I get, was, you can get crap from a woman oh, and no, take it really was, well. I thought I, was, I laughed. I thought it was funny. That's you right. Me heck. Anyhow, how do we get into that? Well, I was going to say, you know, oh, the yeah, movie Kathy industry is, oh, <laughs> to speak more. The movie industry, right, has suffered a great loss. Oh, it's so I, sad to hear Sean Connery passed on. Dad. I know that's the sports and I know you shouldn't be speaking about a movie star, but he, he was a great movie star. He was a bodybuilder too. He started out as, uh, I, I know all about him. I read his life story. I read the book on him, and um, he never wrote a book, but they did a thing on him. And I wrote, I read a book, Shelley 1 and Shelley 2 was both Shelley Winters. Yeah, I, I do. I read all books like that. And she, she's talked about Sean Connery. He, he sort of his girlfriend, like in between, in between marriages, he was his girlfriend, and, she, and the story was, I thought, just to tell you what kind of a guy Sean Connery, how many movies was he in, Tim? Uh, I don't know, quite a few. I, you know. Nine, I think, or something he was in. Oh, he was more than nine. He was in a lot of movies. No, no yeah, but I mean the uh, James Bond. Oh. I think it was about nine. Anyhow, seven or nine. So anyhow, the story goes when he was nobody and he, had no, he had, hadn't any money. Him and his brother were living in a house. And she, she was in, she met him somehow. She thought he, every, every woman fell in love with him because he was a big, tall, good looking guy. And, and, and when, when he spoke, he spoke in a Scotch burr, uh, he quite a, he quite a Scotsman, eh? He had on his arm, uh, Scotland forever. So anyhow, he was going to lose his house. Him and his brother was going to lose his house. And, the, and his, uh, Shelley Winter's agent said she was doing a movie over there. She said, um, uh, well, I don't, what was that? What was that? Per Tim? diem. Per diem, yeah. And she had it left over. It was pounds or something. She says, well, give him $500, $500. And he says, I can't give him that. He won't take it. He says, okay, then why don't you do, his brother's write a book, say it's an advance and save his house because she was going back with the, she was going back to the United States. So, he, so that's what happened. And about 12 years later, she was at a party and she really admired a, a, a fur coat a girl was wearing there. And two days later, the fur coat arrived. He said, thanks, from Sean Connery. It was from Sean. And he, that's the kind of guy he was. He wouldn't take money. And um, as movies, I, I just love it when he said Bond. James Bond. <laughs> well, he was, he started my favorite movie of all time, The Man Who Would Be King. Now, that oh, is a yeah. classic movie. If anyone wants to watch a uh, very deep, who, who would the author, Rudyard Kipling? And Roger classic, Kipling wrote it, yeah. and William Houston uh, uh, was the, uh, he did Casablanca and all those movies. And he was, it was his first movie, I think, he was going to do. And a lot of people didn't want to do it. I think way, way back, they were going to do um, uh, uh, Spencer Tracy and, he, and uh, Humphrey Bogart. 
and uh, you know they got too old to do it. So they and they said, "Are you kidding?" I think they I think they were going to get Peter. I don't know Paul Newman. I think and they what are you crazy? You got to get Sean Connery and Michael Caine. And it is a great movie, "Man Who Would Be King" by Rudyard Kipling. And uh, anyhow, that, Sean Connery. He got an Academy Award for The Untouchables, and uh, I always liked him. And uh, he was uh, he was the man. He man. was the Bond. There's no he way was they, the Bond. They, 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 uh, everybody pales in yeah. comparison to, to him. Okay, that's yeah. enough. Uh, so and so now, when you think about it, um, I mean, there there's no hockey going on, and their baseball's over. Well, there, what, what, are, what are you guys going to talk about now? Well, we got lots to talk about. First of all, let's talk about this OHL no hitting. I mean, I'd hate to be the referees. Everybody's talking about everybody else. The Quebec League, it uh, it it has hitting. And the, and the Western League, it has hitting. And somehow, I don't know who makes the decision, <laughs> tells the OHL they can't have. How can you play hockey and not be near one another? It, I mean, it. I mean, well, explain it to me. What is this, a COVID thing okay, or something? Okay, here's yeah, COVID. Uh, uh, somebody in the government has made a decision that the OHL can play, but they can't have body checking. Well, no, first of all, there's no body checking, not much anyhow, but they got to go near one another. And the Quebec League has is playing, and it has body checking, and the yeah, uh, but, but Doug Ford he put out a thing last night. Did he? Yeah, he said that it, they're still talking, and like he 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 says you know that they're they're oh, they're going to try to work to get OHL back and have checking. I mean, I, mean, I mean, I know Doug Ford probably just read that and just went here like, we oh, go. Everything <laughs> that I got on my plate, and you know this MP puts this out. And now everybody's up in arms, and now he's got to put out the fire. Yeah. And, and and I think to be honest, she kind of did it on like off the cuff, like just it was just an, an off, oh, the cuff, yeah. off the cuff interview. But um, well, how can you have any? Now I want to ask you, Tim, how many people did you have for Halloween? I I sat out zero. But, uh, I had one, and a policeman come with his kids. <laughs> but here's here's the thing, like oh, talking about trick or treating and all that, and we'll get off in this, but. If they would let, so here's the thing: they're going to let the OHL play, but without hitting, right? That's what they said. Okay, so they let the young kids go to school, right? The young kids are going to school, like you know, ten, eleven, twelve year olds yeah. are going to school, but they won't let them play hockey. So there's no hitting at that age anyway. Like no. they don't, they don't hit at the age. So if they're going no, to they let don't. them, let them go to school. Well, we watched. We watched the. There's very few bashes and it's by accident unless you do something yeah but like but the rule is until you're 13 you can't yeah. hit so the question is if you're going to let the kids go to school and you're going to let the ohl play but they can't hit why wouldn't you let the young kids play and because right. there's no hitting i mean it just it, it's just it know. is so missed you know you know I, I we i you were showing me a thing from uh, al from regina we talked about short sticks and long sticks, and he said he was sort of confused. Now, I'd like to talk more about Byfield. And, uh, I, you know, we, we went to see him play in, where was it, St. Andrews? St. Andrews, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we saw him play. Uh, he was with, uh, I think, York Simcoe we saw him play. Yeah, we went out there, and don't ever trip when you go out there. What a beautiful spot. Now, let me just start talking about I, I, what I said about uh, this Byfield. Big guy. He's, big, he's as big as Lindros, but he doesn't play like Lindros. But he, he had a short stick. The first time I saw him, he says, his stick is too short. He's going to be bent over. He can get away with it in junior. And he did had a great in Sudbury. Bang, you're going to get hit because you're bent over all the time. But And uh, uh, Gordy Howe had a short stick, but he had a short you can You can go from a long stick to a short stick. And I heard the guys on TV and everything say that, that when, you know, they get a hold of him, they'll give they'll give him a long stick. Yeah, you, they were saying on that on on Sportsnet that you can't go from a short stick to a long stick. You you just can't. Now a lot of small guys have a long stick, and and uh, Martin St. Louis comes to mind, and he scored won the scoring title because if you, if you have a long stick and you're a short guy, you're as, you're just as um, Good as a, as a tall guy because you can do everything, but uh, to be honest, you have to be honest with a short stick. You can handle a puck better, but you don't have the shot the same. And uh, I remember, uh, I, I so I said, I wonder how uh, Bobby Orr, the greatest hockey player who ever played. I wonder, I, and I had one of his original sticks, and I 
I, I went and, and it's to the chin. And I, I remember uh, in, your, in your street shoes or whatever it is, the stick should come to your chin. So that answers L. Now, uh, get, to, get into, to get into sticks and that, the guy that we talked about before was McKinnis, was unbelievable. He had a wooden stick, and, and uh, he could go 100 miles an hour in that sh- slap shot. Now, a composite stick, and you, I remember when I played, no, three or four guys could really hum a puck. But now everybody can with that thing. There's, it's like a boomerang almost and everything like that. Yeah, you know, I, by the way, I have to have to say that this is, we're, we're doing this Sunday, uh, and um, Jack Nicolux uh, went for Trump, said that, what did he say? He said that uh, he, he was our uh, president. And Bobby Orr took a page out in the New Hampshire uh, no, no, he's taking no taking a page out in the Boston Globe in Massachusetts because it doesn't matter. Yeah, the Republicans, there's no way they're going to win. <laughs> no no in way. Fact, in fact, you can't even get, like, you know, you can bet on who's going to win what, you know, like is a Republican going to win in South Dakota or whatever, but they won't in Massachusetts because the Democrats are going to win. So that's why he took it out in New Hampshire. What's the nickname for Massachusetts? Taxachusetts. Taxachusetts, yes. What is it called? Taxachusetts. Oh, yeah. They, boy, the, I know I was there. Well, Bobby, I mean, it, you know, that was pretty gutsy of Bobby to do that. You better be, believe it. Because he, he really, you know, he really got into a lot of flack. Oh. oh. And you know, Jack Nicholas too. But the guy they give the hardest Nicholson. was Bobby Orr because. Nicholson, not Nicoluck. Nicholson. Oh, I, what do I call him? My Nicola. Nicola. No, Nicola. Nicola. You call him Jack Nicholas. Like the, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, <laughs> okay, Jack Nicholas. Okay. He's, he come out for Trump, too. And, uh, but the one they give Bobby Orr, like they couldn't believe Bobby Orr was, uh, I mean, he took an, uh, took an advertisement of full, and he paid for it. And, uh, you know, it's really something, anyhow. Talking well, about- uh, yeah, it's funny how, like, you know, as they say, if you, if you go in the Twitter world, he really got, oh. he really got blasted. But, it, you know, and it, it's Twitter world anyhow. Why the people that don't? I hate to interrupt him, but the people that don't like him wouldn't buy his memorabilia anyhow. Yeah. So, so what's well, no, but I'm just saying. I was just going to say how when athletes come out and they were for Biden, it was how great it was that they're using their platform to you know yeah. push oh, all that, true. and then when Bobby came out and. Brett Favre came out and, and everybody. They're bad guys. Oh, you know, it's why are these athletes, you know, what do they know? Another rich athlete endorsing yeah. right. Trump. That right. was the big that thing, the you big know. Thing. Anyhow, Bobby took the full page out, boy, I'm, and he's for Trump, and so is Jack Nicklaus. <laughs> and what, Jack, I don't know why I call him that. He won 18 majors in uh, the greatest golf. Well, so he's a, we've got to tell everybody, we still got to bet. Hmm? We still oh, have a, we got a you're bet. you're going to lose. I I'm uh, I'm a Trump man too. So. You doubled it, day eh, dad. Like I'm I'm in for I I'm not doubling mine. I mean I still like Trump. It. <laughs> what do I got with you? No, I'm with you. I oh, think Trump. Oh, I know Trump's okay. going to win, and so yeah. But you well, doubled I, I, it. I didn't I didn't check this morning, but when we made the bet, Biden had a big lead on all the sports I bets. I told on, you. But the polls mean nothing to me. I mean you but know. Those, but the betting guys know. Oh the bet. Oh the bet. Well, they think yeah. they know. Yeah. They think they know. But just speaking of betting, we just want to quickly mention our sponsor, oh, yeah. Spreads.ca. It's the First Nations owned online casino and sports book, and it's tailored for Canadians. Sign up now and enter the promo grapes, and they'll match your deposit 100% up to $500. So if you put 50 bucks in, they'll give you 50 bucks. You get 15 free spins on the wheel to win some big dough. And then when you sign up for the first time, they'll give you 25 bucks for a free bet. No, so- I, I had a, a couple of guys come up to me, and they want. They, they want to bet. Okay, Tim, uh, this putting you on the spot again. If I want to bet on uh, 20 bucks on a certain thing, say I want to bet on uh, uh, something, what do, what, how, what do I phone, who do I phone or what do I do? So, well, you go on sp- sp- spreads.ca. Oh, spreads.ca. Okay, and you have well, how to. How do you spell that? Like Spreads, S-P-R-E-A-D-S okay. dot C-A. Okay, yeah. And then what you do is you have to sign up. So you put your email address in and you put a password in. And then you have to... You make up your password? Make up your own password. Yeah. And then you have to put money into your... like your, your How do you do that now? Well, there's a way that you put it through your credit card. Your, oh, your credit, credit card, card yeah. You put it up. And then you could go... They have online casino, so you can play, you know, blackjack. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can play like... And then the nice thing with that too is that you can play 50 cent blackjack so if you just want to go and spend some time and play blackjack 50 cents you don't have to spend five bucks and then um or you can go on the sports book and then they have a list of 
all the different sporting oh, events, yeah. and then you go in. Okay. So, like, if you were going to bet on the World Series, you go on the World Series, and then they give you the odds, and then they also have prop bets and, like, who's going to score first. And even what's is kind of cool now, they have things where, like, halfway through the game, like, if you're watching an NFL game, some of the games you can still bet who's going to win even at halftime oh, yeah. if they're going to come back and all that stuff. What did you think of, uh, not that uh, you were talking about the World Series, what did you think of... Uh, the manager, uh, Pullen Snell, uh, I mean... Uh, well, what, uh, that's the thing that, it, like, um, yeah, so people that don't know what happened was the, the L.A. Dodgers won the World Series, and in Game 6, uh, Tampa Bay had to win. They were down, right? So, one nothing score. One nothing, and so... And it he was, was smoking. Snell it was, was smoking. The sixth inning, they were, Rays were up one nothing, and the starter, Blake Snell, I mean, he was just oh, unbelievable. More, nailing everybody. One hit, nine strikeouts. He struck out nine out of 16 batters. And, oh, he was, and then uh, what the did, manager. What did the, what did Betts say after? Like when the when. The, well, he interviewed Mookie Betts because he was and he's he was the star for the Dodgers, and they said, "What you think of taking Snell?" And he said, "I don't know about that move. I don't like." He didn't. He just he, he said the dot. Like me reading the Dodger dugout was just ecstatic. Oh, well, so they pull him. They pull the man. They they uh, they pull the pitcher, and two batters later, they're down. Jacks. They put a guy in in Jackson. I felt so sorry could, for him. So you could say that if the other team is happy that of a move that you make on your own team, that it might not have been the right move. Is that? Well, could you know, you, it's you, funny, can you do that assumption? You know, it's a funny thing. I'm watching the game, and he got a single off. You know, he got a single, mm -hmm. and he saw the guy coming out, and I, we can't say what he said to himself. Because he he did not want to come out, he, no. he, you know, and but and they had a rule. Now go ahead, tell about anecdotal. I don't know how to. Well, say. we were we we you know you're good friends with a guy from Kingston, Bob Elliott, who's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, and, and the uh, only Canadian that. The only Canadian writer in the Baseball yeah, Hall of Fame, which is something because the Baseball Hall of Fame is tough to get. You know, into. they're all American. And uh, so I said, you know, so we, we you sent some emails back, and, and I said, what'd you think of that? And he said that the, the manager, what's his name, Cash, he says he doesn't have, he has no control over that, that that they have analytics, they have people who just put in numbers, and the numbers say to take Snell out because it's the third time up at, this is the third time, to, third time through the lineup and to pull him. And he says that, that, that the manager's in a no-win situation because he's told to pull him, and if he yeah. doesn't pull him, well, then it's your and, head. And he just got a single. So he give it. I often wonder if he had to suck that guy out, you know. And I saw. I said he's not going to take him out. Holy smoke! I said, is he going to get if this Jackson doesn't pitch well? And he bing, 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 and they lost. That's where they lost the game. But I said, if he doesn't, if he doesn't pitch well, this manager is going to get it. But I, I Brian Kilray, the winningest coach of all time in junior hockey. I think. I think you sent over a thing about him. What he thought of... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> they asked him, they said, is, does analytics, which is, you know, the number crunching to get in, you know, what to make a decision, have any, th have any place in hockey? And he goes, yeah, in the bathroom. In the washroom. <laughs> washroom. You were never a, a stats guy, were you? Like, when you coached the Bruins, did you ever look at stats? You're big on plus and minus, but... No, I didn't. I wasn't... Plus. You didn't even look at the plus I and did. minus? When the guy came in, I'd just hold my hand up like that because I... Re I Tell it for the first time. The first time I looked at that, you know, this is the NHL, not the American. We lost. I never, a guy like that, he'd come in, he'd open the door, he'd always bring it in, and I'd, he'd put it down, and I would never look at it. I did not know till you told me that Ricky Smith on our team was the highest plus outside of Bobby Orr. I mean, Bob, Bobby Orr played. Imagine Bobby Orr was a plus 123. Ricky Smith, when... Was, was the 77, second. 78 the year we got uh, 11, 20 goal scores was plus well, plus 70. Plus 70. And the guy that won it this year uh, was uh, Graves. What was his first name? I forget. Ryan. Ryan Graves. He was plus 40. And Ricky Smith was plus 70. I didn't know. And you did not, you had to tell me. I did not know. Yeah. So you were so not into stats. You, no, I did not. You didn't it. even like the shots on goal. <laughs> like I the Boston to... Gardens at the time was the only place where yeah. they didn't have shots on goal. You know, at one time it was the only place that had a special clock. That's right. Were shot on goal. So I'd be back at the bench and, I, and I'd listen to Phil Esposito. See, he didn't give us a shot. Did, like, who cares if he didn't? Some guy upstairs is giving it, didn't give us a shot there. He was more worried about the shots on that. 
Now, you have to be very careful with the guy that, that has shots on net because what happens is you can make your goaltender look bad or you can make your goaltender look good. These guys were worried, and I told I said, Harry, if you don't take that shot clock down, I said, it's bothering the pl- it's bothering a guy like Phil. I mean, he's, he look after every shot, he'd look up at the clock. Well, Gilbert used to look up at the Gilbert, shots. And Gilbert used to look up at the clock. I said, Harry, take that. We were the only team in the league that had that clock shot separate. It was, I remember. It wasn't on the scoreboard. <clears throat> no, it was at the same. And everybody yeah. used to look at it. I said, Harry, I'm telling you, take that clock down or I'm going to rip it off the wall. And because I, you know, I. Well, because like Jill Bear, he'd get mad if he make a save and they didn't give a shot. Yeah, he'd and then, say, "Well, I, re- I think I remember it was only at one end, right? It was at the one. It end. was the one end, and when Gilly was playing in front of the shot clock, he would actually look over his yeah. shoulder and look at the clock. We were more worried about shots on net than we were winning the I game. I remember that. I go, "Oh my," because mom, I'd sit with mom. I said, "Look at Gilly." I says, "You look behind him." I said, "That just bugs dad." I said, "Something's going to happen." And yes, no, you guys used. I didn't know too much about Gilly, but yes. <laughs> Zito used to bother me. I mean, yeah. He'd get a shot. He'd be happy. What's a shot mean? doesn't mean anything. And uh, uh, so anyhow. I, I got to tell a quick story about um, plus minus. And, and again, you you never really, like we talk about it now kind of as a gauge, but you never looked at it. I never looked at it because I didn't want to look at it. But we were in Colorado and uh, remember you were, we were in Colorado and you were, I was in your office and you were in your office and you. You know, Dad's desk was kind of messy as it mm. was, and Mike Christie came in. Oh yeah, he was waiting. For he was waiting. <laughs> he came in. He wanted, to, and, and then you were on the phone, and so he wanted to talk to you about something. So he's kind of, Mike's just kind of looking at your desk. He's just he, pulling the pen. pulling stuff around. Being you know, nosy. being nosy, right? And, I, and he, I hear him. Yeah. And he, and he picks up, and he goes minus forty. <laughs> 38 I think 30, it was minus 38. 30. That he goes. Oh my God. He goes. I know I was. To have it a rough season, but minus thirty eight, he just <laughs> collapsed into the quarter, <laughs> and then he went a tirade on Hardy Astrom like you can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> this is Don't you goal. worry about it. And he was playing good, but every time he stepped on the ice, Hardy had let in, <laughs> let in a goal. Every it seemed every time. And I remember one time in Winnipeg, we must talk about that one, that he he actually had the guy over at the side, perfect, and the guy just put a feeble shot on that, and he scored. And I remember him standing in the corner, uh, leaning on the boards, thinking, I mean, it was unbelievable, thinking on the boards. And I, and he, and I remember Mike Christie. I mean, he was, he was God love him. He, he had a little fu- a little uh, with his kidney later on, but boy, was he he was a great guy. But I, but I remember him looking just a shock on his face that he was my, and that's why, and you know what Brian Kilray said? I, mean, I remember talking to him about plus minus, and I asked him, I said, do you look at plus minus when he, he goes, no. And he says, if somebody has, he goes, if what they should do is every year, every month, they should start, start over again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because he says, if you have a bad month and you're minus 15, you're never going to catch up. Right, never. You're never going to catch up. At best, you're going to be as even. But then, if you have, if you start at zero and you idea. have a good and you have a good month, well, and you look and you can say, well, you know, he's playing better because this month he's plus five or six, where last month he was minus ten or fifteen. And so, but you know, like you, you Brian Killer is like you. He he never looked at. He and then you look at, at some of these coaches; they live and die by stats. Well, that because you were saying they don't have a feel well, for the team. Especially baseball. They don't have a feel for the team like like you did. I think this guy knew, but what's he going to do? It was uh, how many? I mean, he was right on the money, and the guy got the single, and I thought, holy smokes, he's not going to pull. And the guy did not want to come out. And and the L.A. Dodgers, they were so happy to see him being pulled. That's a, the guy, whoever said, and well, you know what Tampa said? They got me to the final analytical or whatever you call it, got it to the final. So you had to go along with it. But uh, yeah, but and, I mean, he but did, it, and he's it, taking it, all the shots. Right. And that's what the one guy. I remember the one guy from I think his name was Kevin Miller from Major League Baseball says, why aren't the guys who do the analytics? Why aren't they up answering yeah. the questions by the media? He saying, didn't know what to do. Like what 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 the plan. So, you know, he's taking the shots. And you know what? That'll follow him around. They, you know what? They'll be mentioning that 10 years from now because that was so it was so obvious. I mean, he, a dumb head, a dumb head would know not to pull this guy because they couldn't even touch him. They weren't even near. What was what, what just what was this? He had one in six innings. He had one one hit. Uh, six. What was it? One hit. He had uh, one run, 
and yeah, uh, he nothing. struck out nine out of 16 batters. Unbelievable. <laughs> they but there again, Dad, if you got a, a coach that's worrying about his job, obviously if he went against upper management, he'd be worried well, about got, his job. I know that. And, you, and that's why you got, you know, a lot of times. Well, the thing is, you either do, you either, and you know, you know the first, you know the p- people that know the first? It's the players. Yeah. The players know if, if a guy your is... Your management count, or you're yep, one of those yeah, guys. If you're, and I got told... I got to be more managed. I remember the very first time I coached Doug Adams. God love him. He's died. I think he's died. <laughs> Better be careful. But he was a golf guy. And he came in and he said, you got to be more management. If you want to get by in hockey or any, you got to be more management than you are players. I didn't pay, didn't pay any attention to him. So fire. do you think, like, you know, you've always talked about a manager and a coach, and you know, handling the dressing room. Like, do you think the Tampa Bay Ray baseball players now, don't, oh, they, they, knew. They, they don't look at him the same way? Nope. They, don't, they, don't, they know that he's being told and he wanted to keep his job. Exactly. And, that, and Tampa Bay had the, young, had the uh, smallest payroll. payroll. <laughs> Mookie Betts. That was, what was the stats you were saying? Mookie about- Betts, who was, what is he, a right fielder for the Dodgers, made more money than the starting lineup of the whole Tampa Bay. And, and, and they won. So it paid off. And they get big crowds and, and they can afford it. But uh, Mookie Betts, imagine, <laughs> making more money. And, uh, and, they, and, and uh, Tampa Bay, they don't try anything. They got the other bad arena or bad baseball. Or something. Many how they don't try anything, and there they are in the finals. And they had the most expensive team, the Dodgers, which who won, and the least expensive, uh, 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 salary wise, was the Tampa. So that, that was as far. As, so anyhow, that's gone. We're talking about it, but uh, they'll that that manager will be no. It, the, oh yeah, that's the guy that pulled that guy, yeah. and Snell. I don't. I, th- he was on a roll. I mean, he. You could see the confidence in this guy. <laughs> he knew he had them. But I, so I, you're I, always telling me that pulling a pitcher is not the same as pulling a goalie. But in that case, it might have been because he well, was upset. Yeah. I know he was really upset. Goalies do not like to be pulled. I never pulled my goalie except for Hardy. I remember one time in New York. This is a true story. We're getting beaten. The owners were there. I knew I was getting fired. And Hardy wanted a bail. And I said, I, Kevin Morrison... Was was on defense. I says, you know, he wa- he wants to come out. And I said, don't let him out. He, when you go out on the shift, if he starts coming out, push him back in the net. <laughs> <laughs> and I made him stay. And I think we got beat eight nothing. Did you something. ever pull Gilly or Cheevers? No, I don't know. I don't. Or Zimmer- Zimmerman. No, you know, you know what happens. A lot of a lot of guys pull a goalie to to get a bigger. Um, uh, they get a lift. They, you know, the other players put the goalie in. They played a lot better because they got this backup in and all that stuff like. That. But what happens that I found is that when the when the your number one goalie starts having a bad game, he starts looking at the bench. So I, I you know, you got to start it, and you're going to finish it. We must get in with so David. So they yeah. dig you, they dig you in a hole. You're yeah, going you the got distance. it. You're going to stay in there the whole time. You know, I'm not going to bail you out. Yeah. The one thing too that we go when we when when hockey starts up again, we'll be going out watching the the minor midgets. But young coaches really have to be careful pulling goalies. Oh, it's Whoa. painful to watch when you go oh. and when they pull the goalies. How about the sometimes? time? How about the time I come in late? Oh, don't we don't Del, want to talk about and that. De- and Del, who who is not who um. Was playing goal. How old has he been? been oh, he was ten, nine or ten or nine something. Or ten. Maybe was he? And I one? came in and, and I'm standing with his father Roger, and I'm saying, "Where is the like? I thought Del was, it was the first. We we're, were two minutes into the game, and yeah. he was, and we were like thirty seconds late or a minute late, and Del wasn't playing, and the and his his coach pulled him after the first shot went in, and it yanked was a him tip out. In. It, it was whatever, and and guess who the back well, not backup goalie because in those days they switched the goalies. Guess who's guess who the uh, coaches his son was the other goalie and he put he put the other goalie. I said, well, I have to get out of here. Yeah, and they was... said, why are you leaving? I said, if I don't, I'll be I'll be charged with murder. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, but we like you you and I watch games where oh, where that... kids kids have like uh, have been pretty good goalies and you know they the coaches ruined them by pulling them. Yeah, how about that kid, the little kid? Remember the kid we went to see. And he left his mask on, and he was crying with his mask on. And I was going down to grab the coach. It was an Irish guy, too. Yeah. Well, Remember that? There's, there, yeah, there's a lot of, like, stories where uh, I, the, the guys, they just... And the funny thing is, like, they just they just let the kid collapse on the bench. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they don't go down and cool. console them. They don't wait till the end of the period. They don't, you know, they just yank them. It's yeah, just, it's, it's, it, it, cr- it's criminal what they do. got to be careful with gold because they're a little flaky to start with. <laughs> and I think one of the worst ones I saw was there was a goalie who was really, who was pretty good and was in the first round of the playoffs. And it was nothing, nothing going into probably about halfway through the game. And he got scored on on a breakaway. And I think it was like the Marlies he were playing. So it was like McDavid or Hosong scored on him. And the guy pulled him. And, 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 and you know, the goalie went in and then they got bombed. And the other, he was never the same after that. And I see Hosong. Uh, you mentioned Hosong. I see he signed a year contract. Another year. I, mean, I, can, te- I can tell you being a, a hockey mom that in the rinks, the hockey mom, the goalie's mom, if her kids are starting, will usually sit by herself. And you can always see who's going to start because if the mother is sitting with the other mothers, that means their kid isn't starting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if she's over in the in a corner, uh-oh, her son's going to start. I never and everyone enjoyed. leaves her alone. I used to like you, Tim, when you played. You got, you, when you, you score, you know, but I, I never enjoyed a game when Dell was playing. No. I, was, I could hardly wait till the game got over. And I remember one guy says, uh, D- uh, D- I remember I stopped talking to people. I never talked to anybody anyhow. But with one time I talked to guys, Dell would like that third go back. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> He's, well, I want him. So that was it. I never enjoyed it. I never enjoyed one game when uh, my grandson was playing. And I tell you, boy, to be a goaltender, you have to be a different person uh, to be a goaltender. I should have thought of that when I. Did Jilly Gilbert? I used to give him a hard time. All <laughs> never used to talk to him. Anyhow, that manager will be noted for the rest of his life. That's the guy. They say that's the guy that pulled the guy. The guy's name Snell was the pitcher. This and he would just mowing him down. Yep. Do you want to go over some of the kids that got drafted that we've seen over the? Yeah. Why don't you uh, tell your, your? You know how to pronounce the names. I know the kids, but I don't know. I just don't know. And we we saw a lot. We saw an awful lot of kids. Well, we saw a lot of them drafted. And uh, we yeah, like so this year. We, and yeah, this, you you do it though. Well, there was well, we saw Quentin Byfield. We've talked about him. Talked about him, yeah. And um, short stick, I, short. You know, he's got a short stick. He's six. He's he's and he's young. Like he's a. He's, He'll be about six six. He's he's almost ten months younger than the rest of the kids. So that's you know that's that's mm. a lot. Uh, At that he's, age. he's six four, two hundred and fifteen pounds. Mm. He'll be uh, about six six. But you know what though, Dad? I, you and I watched him. He's. You're not knocking the kids, and, and that's the problem. No, don't. We don't want to knock anybody, but we, we're not we, going to be like those guys on TV. Everybody's a superstar. superstar. He he's really got to work. He's got to work on his first few strides because yeah. when we saw him and play for Sudbury, he he was he's good. I mean, he's okay. He's Remember a, the third period when they must have told him I was there. Yeah, Remember that, that, was that goal. Your, yeah, the one goal. He let a shot go. But, Boy, he can do it. But uh, so he's. Um, he went to LA, and I think he'll he'll do well. But he, well, he'll he, play. He'll play, but yeah. he's he's skinny. He's got to get him up. And then, um, I, I and then on the sixth round, our sixth overall was Jamie Drysdale. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, Boy, and I I, I got to be with Ottawa. I can't believe they didn't pick him. They took two defensemen before him. And, Boy, he's a beauty. And in about four or five years, yeah, people are going to say I can't believe Three. Ottawa didn't take Jamie Drysdale. Yeah, and because he was the young second youngest kid on Team Canada last year in the juniors. And he, remember, one of the defensemen got hurt, and he had to play. Yeah, and he and played. He, and he played. And that's a 19-year-old. He was 17 at the time, and that's a 19-year-old tournament. Yeah. And he really played well. Did he and, ever? And, uh, I like him. I don't know. And then the one thing, and then number 10, the guy that you, you and I liked uh, was Cole Profetti. Uh, we saw him play for Vaughn. The Jets picked him up. This guy, yeah, and and they're, they've got a beauty in him. Whoever scouted him, he's good. Well, the Jets with Shovel Day or the GM. What's his Shovel Day off? The GM said he goes. I can't believe he says we can't believe he was there. Oh, I couldn't and, either. And, and here's the thing that I always find funny. We, you know, you and I are just talking about analytics, and everybody talks about you know, oh, you know, and these guys are supposed to be the analytics. He he scored everywhere he's gone. He scored. Like every like when we saw him, he had 125 points in, in X amount of games. So in his rookie year with Saginaw in the OHL, he had 37 goals. And last year, he had 111 points in 61 games. And only Lafreniere had 112. Now he had played a few less games. And this and and D- Detroit, who I thought was going to take him because they kind of have a connection. Well, with they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to pull a 
uh, Hegman or somebody like that. I, 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 just, I just don't understand Detroit. So they, they took a Swede who has 24 points in 42 games, and they passed up a guy in the OHL that has 111 points. And, and so you go like, like what don't ask and, me. and then even that Rossi that is is who played for uh, for uh, Brian's team 67s he had 120 points and he went tenth so you just you, you you wonder where their people's heads like you know you just well they're try, what they're trying I'll tell you what they're trying to do Tim they're trying to pull a a, a, a guy out of the hat you know, oh boy are they ever a good manager they picked that guy T- p- instead of picking the obvious guy they uh, think too much. Remember, I, I have to go, yeah, they think too much. I remember, I, I, we have to, I know we're going a little long here, but I have to tell one story. This is, this is the unbelievable story it cost me at Stanley Cup. I remember the reporters coming to me, Don, you have to pick this guy. You have to pick this guy. Where was he playing in New, New Hampshire? You know, I think it was the University of Hampshire. Yeah. yeah, you have to pick this guy. He's got a Boston accent. He's a big guy. He's a defenseman. I, so I said, so I, 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 I went in and I said, Harry, I, I don't know who you're picking, you know, number one, but I said, this guy is six foot two, a big guy, and, and, and all our, And you kind of needed a defenseman, didn't you? And we needed a defenseman because we're going to lose Bobby. He's going to Chicago. And, he's, and he, no, oh, I'm not. What are you going to listen to the writers? And I said, well, geez, these guys know what's going on. <laughs> it really is amazing when you think about it. Well, no, wait, wait till I tell you the guy. Well, maybe the peop- people that my era will re- remember. So we took it. We're not, we're not, I'm not, not knocking the goalie we took. We already had three defense, three goalies. We had Jilly Gilbert, who set a record. We had Jerry Cheever, St. O'Moore, Stanley Cup winner. And then we had Ron Graham, the best goaltender in the WHA. So we had three goalies to start with. I mean, we did, he did trade Graham later on. So we take a goaltender, a small goaltender, who never, I think he played about 100 games in the National Hockey League. You know who we passed up? Rod Langway. And guess Montreal took right after us because we're, <laughs> and they took Rod Langway. <laughs> what did he win? Stan, he won the Norse Trophy, yeah. and he played about 20 years in the National Hockey League. Him and Park on defense would have been unbelievable. Instead, he goes and he plays for the Montreal Canadiens. So is, is that a reflection of the scouts in that yes. area? Yeah, we but had they just weren't they stupid just guys. Know. Yeah, they just so didn't know. I would just I told you, we said this once before, but just just think this could have happened for Boston. Let's say everything, let's say Bobby was okay, right? And yeah, he, he played. Yeah, so you would have had Brad Park, and you would have had Bobby, right? Yeah. Then let's say you did draft Rod Langway, so you would have had Brad Park, Bobby or Rod, Rod Langway, and then you trade. Then Harry traded. Yeah. Oh, that's true. He traded Rod never Graham of to that. L.A. and got Ray Bork. So you guys could have had. Park or Bork and Langway. <laughs> Holy smokes! And that, and just, it just if Bobby would have stayed and his needs would have been I'd okay. Bobby probably would have stayed. I would have talked to Bobby on that one, and you know, and he wouldn't have had to play. Uh, he wouldn't have had to kill penalties. He wouldn't have had to do all that stuff. But anyhow, so uh, I uh, guess that we talked long enough. One more guy, I just want to mention that we saw that 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 I I mentioned before though I think is going to be the dark. Yeah, you tell him. Is uh, he was picked one hundred well ninety eighth by the Sharks is a guy named Brandon Coe. And yeah, if, we used to talk we, about him. Yeah, huh? he's a big guy. He plays. For, he played for the Nats, and he was a pointy game for them. And uh, he's a pretty good skater. Like he's 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 okay. And he's he's 100 hundred hundred and hundred and ninety. Too big. Hundred and ninety pounds. Uh, and he played for North Bay, which wasn't a very good team last year. And he's still up getting a pointy game. And uh, I think that you know, I think that he's going to be a guy that you well, know, we'll, in like four or five years, people are going to say, "Well, he's one of those." I, I don't know. Again, Tim. Tell me how, he, how Toronto and and you know I'm for Toronto. I, I think was, they do. Anal- I think they what just are, what are the like they draft all their draft was from Europe. Like I don't. Well, they America. shows that they're progressive. They're very no. I think that, I think that they they rely on analytics. I think that Dubis is one of those guys that yeah, but oh, they but don't they, score. I mean, they're over there. They don't <laughs> they don't get any goals, and they're playing in the and the ice capades over there. And then they then they every guy he's got. Except one is from Ontario, like uh, like I don't get it, I don't get it. I think it's Spezza, who's the big guy. Well, <laughs> they, fight, as they fight, say, they, they fight. That's a fighting, and then we get Simmons. I mean, Sim, I told you about Simmons. Some day he's going to sit down, and he said, "Wait a minute, I'm 32 years old. <laughs> I'm 32 years old. I got a one year contract. I'm making a million, which is a lot of money, a million and a half." 
And I'm supposed to protect these guys that are 23, 24, 25, well, making that's not, 10 million? Is that, that's not Spezza's job, is it? He, like no. He's, no. Well, he, he did fight, though. He was the only Spez, guy that fought in the Jason playoffs. Jason Spezza was fighting. Yeah, he, he was. he's a fighter. Oh. I don't, never mind. Never mind, Toronto. I just said I, I don't understand drafting. And, you know, I am, I love the kids here. 40,000. 40,000 kids playing around Toronto. More juniors than anybody place in the world. And we draft, all, and I say we, we draft <laughs> all Europeans. Well, I don't get it. Well, it's the same with Ottawa. They take a German and an American over Jamie Drysdale. Yeah. You know, and you look well, and you go, you know, you look and you go, you know, Jamie Drysdale, to me, he was maybe one of the best defensemen that we've seen. Like what, are, like, what are their minds? Do they ever watch these guys? I remember that uh, we got to go. I know we're going on a little too yeah. long. I remember that we and I and Colorado drafted a guy. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to mention the name because he doesn't like me and I don't like him. And he had a good playoffs and he had a broken leg or something. They said, and we took him and we we took him. We took him number one. We were number one, number one. And, I, and we call him Baby Huey and he couldn't make our club. And I uh, floated. Anyhow, we're going down the thing. I just don't understand how they draft. We go out and we watch these kids, and where do they, where, like, what are they thinking? Anyhow, Bobby Orr, let's go with the end of, and Jack well, Nicholas, we'll have to end there. We, well, uh, next week we'll know who won. We'll know. We can be talking yeah, about that. Yeah, and you next... know what? Uh, on this program, I'm going to take, and you have to count it out because <laughs> he's winning. All right. Well, you got Trump. I'm saying Biden's going to win. It, it, but when I said it, the spread was a lot wider. Doesn't up. matter. I <laughs> told got, you. It got, it got a lot closer the last and what, week. And, and we're doing this on a Sunday. And, uh, so t- Tuesday, it'll be the election. Do four, well, gonna... we might not know by Sunday. They still might yeah, be. They'll they be might, arguing yeah. back They'll be forth. arguing. The count was off. Who did Anyhow, what? you're going to count the money out. Okay. Well, again, we'd like to thank everybody for listening and thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. So if you want to go bet some football, Go there if you would just feel like playing some casino games. I, I'm, I, I, I watch football all the time. I'm sort of a punker. And Brady's doing good, so I'm happy. Yeah, everybody, but boy, they were all on him. Yeah, I remember he lost that game. Never, what is he, 5-2 and two now? Yep, yep. So I don't know what he, but he's doing good anyhow. All right, well, we, uh, thanks everybody for listening, and we'll uh, talk to you next week. Toodaloo.